A very good day I bid to Madam Nomala and my fellow friends. I am Patricia from Group 1 and consists of my other teammates, those are Farah Fakiha, No Adira, Alia Nazira, Alia Balkis, and Farah Shazana will be presenting about a company called FGV Berhad. Before I start with the introduction of the company, I will give a snapshot about the agriculture industry. In the early 20s, agriculture industry has been the backbone for Malaysia's economy. They contribute in the national GDP and a major employment for the societies. They also are one of the largest exporters to many countries such as Europe, China, India and the United States. Before COVID-19 happened, the industry has been declining bit by bit. This is because of labor shortage, increase of production costs, and also low quality of production. After COVID-19 happened, the agriculture sector has been affected more worse in Malaysia. Since there are movement restrictions, it made the work progress slowing and resulted in slow agriculture services and production because of supply chain disruption. Now, for introductions of FGV. FGV Holding Berhad is a Malaysian-based global agriculture and agri-commodities company. FGV produce oil palm and rubber plantation products and also sugar products. It operates in nine countries across Asia, the Middle East, North America and also Europe. Their core business are plantations, sugar, logistics and many other more. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. I am Farah Shazana. So now I will talk about the background of FGV. So before we dive further into the case, let me explain a bit about FGV's background. So FGV Holdings Burhat was established in the year 2007. Felda had incorporated Felda Global Ventures Holdings in Julian Burhat, which is known as FGV Holdings Burhat now. The reason behind the incorporation is so that FGV will operate as a commercial arm for Felda's overseas investments and the, uh, in the upstream and also downstream of palm oil businesses. So the company was then rebranded to FGV Holdings Berhad in 2018. The reason behind the rebranding was to enable FGV to develop a stronger brand presence as an integrated player in its core business sectors. It will also reinforce FGV's positioning in the market and give them a greater competitive edge in the future. Assalamualaikum and hello everyone. My name is Noor Alia Balkis. So today I will explain about the financial issue in FGV. FGV Holding Berhad is one of subsidiary Felda. FGV knew that their parents' company could help them to expand their plantation because they have a lot of land. So FGV decided to pursue Felda to do the land lease agreement which is LLA. Felda was agreed to give lease at FGV. In November 1, 2011, FGV Holding Berhad and Felda signed a LLA in which Felda leased 351,000 hectares of its land to FGV Holding Berhad for 89 years. FGV agreed to end 248 million ringgit annual fixed lease rent and a 15% share of LLA lands operating profit under the term of the LLA. Next, under the name of FGV Plum Industry, Sunrima Berhad, FGV owned 88,497 hectares of plantation land and 68 plum oil milk mills within three years from the agreement was signed. Unfortunately, FGV decided to terminate their agreement with Felda because they think they cannot proceed with the lease. Even though FGV knows they do not follow the terms and conditions of LLA, but they were ready to proceed with their terms and conditions which FGV have to give back the plantation and pay for the compensation cost uh, due to the company's financial performance could be between RM 3.5 billion and RM 4.3 billion. In conclusion, as stated in the start in 2020, 
Adrian Ko, an analyst with Kenanga Research, says uh, that in essence, the LLA termination is a negative for FGV. This is because the total plantation land back of FGV will be reduced to about 80,000 hectares. The losing the LLA estate uh, also means less control over FFB fruit quality and years replanting since 2011 to 2012 is made fruitless. It is expected that FGV might only uh, replenish about one, 117,000 hectare to 143,000 hectare against the loss of about 355,000 hectare from the likely LLA termination. So the effect of the compensation and loss of land will affect the financial performance of FGV. My name is Nur Atira Binti Ismail. I will explain the financial issue. The financial issue for MDV Holding Merhat is operational leakages and, and efficiency in the system. The operations were not effectively and efficiently managed. Operational leakages and inefficiency in the system run into the millions of ringgit a year. This contributes to poor financial performance. In 2019, FDV said 350 million ringgit worth of non-core business assets. This will cause the impairment and provision amounting to 1.04 billion had dragged the company financial performance together with the this small food from oil. This issue will be discussed further later on. For liquidity ratio, we can see from the graph that the FGV holding Berhad has a weak uh, liquidity efficiency since the current ratio have decreased from 2015 to 2019. However, even though the current ratio has decreased marginally, it is still a good ratio since a current ratio greater than 1 is considered good. Nevertheless, FGV holding Berhad should take step to ensure that liquidity in terms of current asset grows growth in the coming year. It's because the current ratio assesses a com company's ability to cover its current liability with current asset. In contrast, the quick ratio has fallen for four years in a row. Uh, from 0 0.99 to 0 0.62 but in 2019 the quick ratio has risen to 0 0.73 and it is still less than 1. This means that FGV holding Berhad will be uh, unable to fulfill its short-term debt obligation unless inventory is sold. Furthermore, looking at both liquidity ratio over the last four years, the company may not have enough liquidity and could be facing solvency issue. Next, the second line in the net profit margin is calculate uh, FGV overall revenue by dividing net profits by total revenue. It gives a complete image of a company's profitability after all costs, such as interest and tax, have uh, been deducted. One advantage of using the net profit margin as a metric of profitability is that it consider everything. This measure has the disadvantage of including a lot of noise such as one-time cost and losses, making it difficult to compare a FGV performance to that of its review. The Graph showed that net profit margin for FGV holding Berhad in 2015 has fall for has fall uh, from 2015 to 2018 and increased back uh, in to 2019, but it is still negative value for ROE and ROA. 
the flow of the increase and decrease of ratio is same with the net profit margin because is it is based on net profit after tax. As a result, the profitability ratio has declined due to an ups and down in net profit after tax. Since then, the company has been less effective in generating adequate profits for its shareholder by using its asset and equity. For the cash flow analysis in general, a company should have a positive cash flow from its operating activity because it is the main activity in generating money. In 2015, FGV's cash generated from the operation was negative, hence it needed to make borrowing thus affecting its cash generating generated from financing in 2015 the amount of cash generated from financing as high as the amount of cash generated from the operation operation was negative which shows that fgv was unable to generate any cash any cash from its operation for 2016 onward FGV was able to generate positive cash flow from operation. Hence, the amount of cash generated from financing activity was also reduced because FGV was able to run their business well. FGV had used a huge amount of cash to make investment. It clearly showed that FGV is aggressively making investment without Pro, uh, proper research and survey. FGV should do further research before investing. They need to identify whether they have enough resources to do investment or not. As we can see, uh, there's no cash generator for 2015. However, FGV still uh, insists on making investment without proper research. Thus, it will also affect the cash generated in financing which FGV need to do borrowing to perform an investment. Based on cash and cash equivalent in, uh, information, it showed that there was negative amount in 2015 until 2018. Only from 2016, FGV was having a positive or increased in its cash and cash equivalent. This might be due to the positive cash generated from the operation, hence FGV able to improve its cash flow for 2015. Based on the graph above, in terms of collection period, he showed that the amount was decreased every year. This is because FGV holding Berhad was tied their credit policy and also increase of collection effort to make the shorter payment terms on its customer. This that means the smaller the time collection period is better to the FGV holding berhad. Next, the day payable outstanding show that decreasing every year. That means it is a good collection effort affect FGV holding berhad in settling its debt with their creditor which can proven in the calculation. In 2019, the debt, the debt payable outstanding is lower. It can indicate that uh, FGV holding Berhad is not fully utilizing the cash position and may indicate an efficiently operating company. However, for 2018, FGV holding Berhad has high days payable outstanding. This is because it take longer to pay the debt, the bill. That means it can retain available funds for a longer time to allow the company an opportunity to utilize those funds in a better way to maximize the benefit. Based on the analysis that has been made, inventory to open was low from 2015 to 2018. However, this is a huge difference in 2019, which is the inventory turnover in 2000, 
COVID-19 is significantly higher compared to the year before. Inventory turnover is a ratio that used to show that how many times a company has sold or replaced inventory during a given period. The higher the amount of inventory turnover, the better the company performance. In 2019, FTB Holding Berhad was able to sell a huge uh, amount of inventory, thus increasing its inventory turnover. Even though FTB Holding Berhad is having a high amount of inventory turnover, it still provides a high amount of allowance for slow moving inventories. Really show that uh, there is still a huge amount of inventory of FTB Holding Berhad not being able to sold. Other than that, for year 2018, it showed that decrease in inventory turnover from year 2017. This is because FDB Holding Berhad not have enough money tied up in financing its inventory in 2018 than its inventory for 2017. From that ratio, it is a financial ratio that measures the extent of FDB holding per height leverage or it can be interpreted as the proportion of FDB, hold, FDB holding per height resources that are financed by debt. From the graph above, it shows that the ratio increased in 2015 and 2019. However, the ratio remains below 1 from 2015 to 2019, which uh, it says that a greater portion of FTB holding per heart asset is fund by equity and FTB holding per heart has more asset than debt. This low debt ratio also shows moderate financing with a chances for FTB holding per heart to acquire later at no significant risk because lender often have debt ratio limits and how do not add then further credit to company uh, that are over the bridge. Thus, FTB holding per heart may benefit if they want to borrow money from the lender in the future as its debt ratio is lower. Lastly, for debt to equity ratio, FTB holding per heart show an increasing from 2015 to 2019 where the, great, the, the ratio is greater than 1. This may indicate for FGB Holding Berhad is financing a significant amount of its potential growth through borrowing. This can tell that FGB Holding Berhad is dependent on the obligation to fund its asset and the owner position percentage of resources increase. Thus, a greater ratio means a higher risk of of loan default from a lender perspective and it also means uh, increasing profitability of bankruptcy from a shareholder perspective. Assalamualaikum, I am Alia Nazira. I would like to present operation issue that occur in FGV holding Berhad. The first issue is forced labor. US Custom and Border Protection or known as CBP had been uh, import of farm product from FGV uh, due to suspicion on forced labor in manufacturing process. However, plantation industry and commodities minister Muhammad Khairuddin Ahmad Razali said Malaysia has already stopped the recruitment of new foreign worker. It shows that the issue raised by CBP is an old issue and action has been taken by the industry. Few steps have been taken by FGV, which is the first one is FGV has strengthened its procedure and process in recruitment of migrant worker by strengthening pre-departure and post-arrival orientation program for migrant worker. Next, FGV adopted its guideline and procedure for the responsible recruitment of migrant worker in 2019 in accordance with international standards. FGV committed to paying costs associated with the recruitment of migrant workers such as airfare, uh, cost for work permit, visa, medical checkup, and insurance. FGV has also revised uh, the contract with the recruitment agency to ensure that 
no fees are charged to the workers. Last but not least, FGV will not involve in any recruitment or employment of refugees. They will recruit its migrant worker through legal channel and process recognized and approved by the authorities of Malaysia and the source countries. The second operation issue that FGV faced was the operational leakage and inefficiency in their system. So the operational leakage was due to the inefficiencies of their procurement process. So procurement is a process that generally involves making and buying decisions under conditions of scarcity. So the operation was not effectively and efficiently managed. So due to that, FGV had taken three measures to improve their efficiency. First is they made a group-wide review of the procurement policies and also procedures that they have established and they tried to improve them. The second one is they reviewed back the capital structure and also the company's financing cost. And last but not least, FGV had looked into the right sizing of manpower requirements. I would like to explain about SWOT analysis. First, I would like to explain about the strength of FGV. FGV is one of the world's largest plantation companies and group palm oil producer. FGV main strength is its large scale and integrated palm oil operation, which can give to better good economies of scale. FGV has operation in more than 10 countries across Asia, North America and Europe, including upstream and downstream palm oil, rubber, sugar and logistics. As the world's largest CPO producer and third largest oil palm operator, the company already well placed in the industry globally. Other than that, FGV also has strong connection with Felda. It gives it the upper hand for buying overseas plantation and downstream asset. It because FGV has secure fit stock supplies for its palm oil mining operation from the settlers and lease land totaling 850,000 hectares. Next, I will be explaining about the weakness of FGV. The most weakness are almost of the 53% estate are above 21 years, years and need to be replanted. The profitability also has decreased uh, than it peers because the group needs to pay the lease to Felda for replanting costs and it is also due to limited arable land and worker, worker shortage in Malaysia. Next, I will discuss the opportunity of FGV Holding Berhad. FGV Holding Berhad has opportunity in expanding market share in and explore new market around the world. Next, FGV must accelerate the replanting program also by lowering the cost of lease of the estate. In addition, FGV also has changed to bring in expertise through joint venture to other companies such as Sandar B Plantation or IOI Plantation. Lastly, the most key threat of FGV is decreasing crude palm oil selling price due to lower Malaysia currency. The price is also was over capacity in palm oil processing industry in Malaysia and will cause to lower processing margins. Big competitors from other plantation companies such as Standard B Plantation is also most critical threat for FGV. Alright, so next we will look into FGV's Porter's 5 process model. So the five basic forces of the model is threat of new entrants, bargaining power of suppliers, bargaining power of buyers, threat of substitute products or services, and also existing industry rivalry. So we will look into the first force, which is the threat of new entrants. So MGB Holding Berhad's threat of new entrant is considered low. This is due to the strict and rigid policies by the government. Palm oil is an industry that is highly regulated by the government. So there, there might be barriers that will discourage new entrants to penetrate the industry, such as having unstable economies of scale, uh, high access distribution channels, and also tight government policies. The second, for, uh, the second force is the bargaining power of suppliers. So FGV holding Berhad's bargaining power of suppliers will be high. A buyer or a group of buyers is powerful if the industry is dominated by a few companies. So FGV is known as the largest company of palm oil in Malaysia. So it produces various products which are different from others, such as Saji's cooking oil, cream of flavor, um, sauce, mayo, uh, instant noodle, rock salt, and kaya spread. So FGV also has the ability to do forward integrate. 
The third force is bargaining power of buyers. So FDB Holdings Berhad bargaining power of buyers is low. So there are five different groups of buyers which are uh, innovators, adopters, uh, early majority, late majority and also the excessive traditionalists. So the demand for palm oil increases and the prices are predetermined by the government. So the major buyers that FDB have are from European Union, China and also India which have little control over the price. So the fourth force is the threat of substitute products. So FGP Holdings Berhad threat of substitute products is moderate because there are many products that can replace FGV with the same functions to their customers. For example, FG Holding, FGV Holding Berhad produces the product brand Saji. So under the Saji brand, there are many types of products like Saji cooking oil, uh, Saji Mi, Saji Mi, and then uh, Saji sweetened concentrated and evaporated creamer. So it is not only this company that produces this product in the industry, but there are also many firms that produce the same product which can fulfill the human needs. So in addition, most of the companies that produces palm oil have the same procedures or process uh, where there are three stages starting from the process of transporting fresh fruit bunches from the farm to the processing of fresh fruit bunches of oil palm and so on and the last stage of the filtration process. And so the last force is that, which is the fifth force, is the rivalry among competing firms. So FGV Holdings Berhad rivalry among competing firms is high because there is a high number of competing firms in the plantation and also food beverages industry. So one of the factor is the low product differentiation and um, switching cost. So the companies usually compete on pricing because the product differentiation is low. So however, um, FGV Holdings Berhad differentiates its product by optimizing the formulations, packaging of their food products, and making variants in order to ensure that the company can compete with other competitors and no price wall will erode in the company's margin. So next is the price control on plantation products. So a higher cost will drive less demand for palm oil based products as their price will shoot up and consumers will opt to buy cheaper alternative oils. So Malaysia does have a formal pricing policy on it. So the producers, distributors, and also retailers in Malaysia need to follow the pricing to be standardized in order to control profit maximization and high prices charged to the buyer. Assalamualaikum, hello. I am Farah Fakia who would like to present the next important part, which is the management issues that happen in FGV. So the first issue is former directors of FGV and senior management have been sued due to their failure to discharge their fiduciary duty and exercise reasonable care, skills and diligence in performing their job as they acquired a company that was in trouble at that time. FGV has filed a suit against 40 directors to recover 540 million ringgit where it was to cover the losses that faced by FGV when the company acquired Asian Plantations Limited ALP in 2014. The method that triggered FGV to do an investigation is because of the unsuitable land for all palm plantations. The land was not suitable for FGV to continue its business for oil palm due to 7,300 hectare of land being unplantable and 2,600 hectare of land were encumbered with native customary rights claims. There are also few problems encountered by FGV such as the land is hilly, there are frequent landslides happening at the location, the soil is shallow where it is not suitable for oil palm plantations. This is because oil palm needs deep and moist soil to grow. And last but not least, the roads are the logging ones, which cannot be used when it is raining, as the road will be too slippery and no lorries can pass through it. Next, the CEO of FGV, which is Dato Zakar Arshad, has breached the Corporate Governance Code by allowing the practice of sales to Sufitex without letters of credit. Dato Zakar has allowed sales to Sufitex to continue despite there were unsettled payments with FGV in 2014. Besides that, he also allowed Safitex a longer credit term which is 60 days as opposed to FGV's usual credit policy which was only 30 days. 
Due to that, that Zakaria was told to take immediate leave of absence in 2017 when he breached his fiduciary duties as a CEO of LGE. Last but not least is regarding Tan Sri Muhammad Isis Ahmad was appointed as the chairman and then executive director of LGE. Before he was appointed as a chairman, he started his career in politics by joining AMNO and he won the Linky State seat in 1978. Then he was the contestant for the post of vice president of AMNO and he succeeded to hold that position. But everything's changed as he was charged for being involved in five out of nine money politics. However, despite being guilty of corruption charges, Tan Sri Muhammad Isa Samad was still appointed as a chairman and non-executive independent director on 1st January 2011 for LGE. Now, we're going to talk about the recommendation. As a consultant, what will I do to advise the company on how to improve the identified issues and problems. For the issues regarding their financial problems, first, I would like to advise them to discuss before take any decision. When a company has discussion, they will have a wide range of opinions and will not make any unreasonable decision that might impact the company financially. For example, the financial issue regarding LLA with Felda would not happen if FGV have a wide view before terminating the agreement within three years. Next one, I would advise them to sharpen their analytical and negotiation skills. With these two good skills, everyone could do their job efficiently and produce quality outcomes when making decisions. Thus, Every person could manage the company's assets and profitability with worthiness. For example, the issue of operational leakages and inefficiency systems that resulted in poor financial status will not happen if the company efficiently manage their operations and sharpen their skills. Next one, for operational, I would advise them to Partition a reasonable ratio for local workers and foreign workers. The company needs to strengthen their procedures in recruiting the foreign workers and divide a reasonable ratio of local workers and foreign workers. With this, the issue of FGV had with the forced labour where they recruit mainly on migrant workers from India and Indonesia would have practically avoided. I also will advise them to sharpen the analytical skill when making decisions. With good analytical skill, everyone could do their job efficiently and produce quality outcomes when making decisions. So, the issue of operational leakages that happen within the organization would not happen if the company efficiently manage their procurement and sharpen their analytical skills. Last but not least, for management, I will advise them to monitor every transaction happen in the company. When we talk about transaction, it is very important to be monitored and is involved with the company's profits and assets. When it is monitored by the right person, all the transaction happen will be precise and in materiality amounts. So, for sure, the suspicious transaction that the board made in 2013 will not happen in the first place. I will also advise them to discuss before take any actions or decisions regarding the company. The CEO and board of directors need to be responsible for this to be a good organization. With this, there will be a wide options to be considered and unwanted decision would not happen. Thus, they need to discuss before appointing Tan Sri Issa Samad as is it he qualified to be in a very crucial position as a chairman and non-executive independent director of FGV in 2011. Last, I would advise them to prosecute a heavy charge to anyone that did an unethical behaviour. A company should prosecute compounds to any unethical behaviour that happened within the organisation. For example, they should be aware that the act like fraud is prohibited, so the case like Datuk Zakaria Arshad, the CEO of FGV itself, who breached the CG code in 2011 and the former directors and senior management failure to
to discharge their fiduciary duty that happened in 2018 would be avoided and would not happen in the first place. And that's all from us. Thank you.